Hello and welcome to this edition of City Hall Insider. I'm Jim Marshall of the New Bedford Cable Network and Mary's back <laughs> as we have hit summertime. Mary Raposa, the Director of Park Recreation and Beaches for the City of New Bedford. This is like your time of year. Now I know it's obviously year round, but the beaches aren't year round. The this beaches, is no. This is it. This is, this is it. kind of like the next three plus months of the Super Bowl for you guys. That's true. That's true. Um, so there's lots going on. And we want to make sure people are aware of everything that's going on um, because there's a lot. There is a lot. Um, first of all, I guess j before we start, too, just your overall assessment. Where, so how, how do you think the city, uh, the parks and the beaches, how are things looking and just, I guess, operationally, structurally and all that sort of stuff? Is ready to go? Oh, we're ready to go. Absolutely. So we, um, as you know, we bring on a lot of summer staff. And this year we had a great pool of candidates. So we're fully staffed with our lifeguards, our, our park ambassadors, the, the staff at Play in the Park. We're in great shape and we're just hitting the ground running. And that's been an issue too, I know in the past, is that yes. you've needed people. Since COVID, we have had struggled to fill yeah, positions. Yeah, yeah. And, and the last year at this time you were saying that. Yes. This year though, we're in great shape. And the parks physically themselves and the beaches, everything is where you yeah, need it to be? Absolutely. So, yep, we are, um, you know, the beaches are ready to go. We um, work really well with Department of Public Infrastructure who maintain our parks. And so, you know, the ongoing maintenance obviously is something that they're on top of. And, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of park improvements as well. So we've um, we just opened a brand new park downtown, Abolition Row Park. And if folks haven't seen it, I really encourage that they go t take a look at it. And um, we've got several park improvement projects that are in the works. We um, we've started the skate park renovation design process up at Brooklawn Park. We had a public meeting that was really well attended. And we've got new tennis courts going in at Hazelwood, new pickleball courts going up at Brooklawn. So just all, all sorts of, you know, park improvements. And we're, we're really excited about this year. And I don't think people grasp how many parks there are. Yes. I mean, I think people will say Brooklawn, Hazelwood, Buttonwood. There's more. Oh boy, yeah. So we have about 40 neighborhood parks, um, including our major mm -hmm. parks. So we have we have parks throughout the city, and um, you know the the city is part of the Trust for Public Lands 10 minute walk to parks, and we score in uh, like the 93 95 percentile for our residents having a 10 minute walk to a park. So we, we're in excellent shape. And the other thing too is that the, the parks uh, across the city they offer the di they're diverse. They There's are. different things for different people at different yes. places. Yes, and that's intentional because we want folks to have a neighborhood park that they enjoy that they can go to, but we also want them exploring other parks. So we we intentionally make sure that parks have different amenities in them so that folks will, you know, take the opportunity to maybe walk over to a different park or take a drive to go visit you know, a playground that's not the same as the one that's in their neighborhood. What are the keys for, as you said, there's the major parks, but then there's little neighbor, little neighborhood parks. Mm -hmm. What are, in a sense, what are, what are the goals of those parks? So the goal of the neighborhood park is to have a park that's really convenient to families so that a mom can feel comfortable saying, okay, you can go over on the swing set because I know you're only a few doors down or, you know, enlist uh, an older child to take the younger ch right. children to a neighborhood park that's literally just a short walk from their door. And, and I think that that's, again, a perception is that, oh, well, you have this big park, but those neighborhood parks with the swing sets and the little amenities, yep. those make a huge difference in the, in, in the neighborhoods. They do. And some of those little neighborhood parks even have splash pads. So, you know, that's a really important um, feature in our parks that we are, again, is very intentional. We want to make sure that there's splash pads within walking distance of every neighborhood so that when the summer heat comes, kids can go and enjoy the, the fun at the splash pad, but also cool down. Right. Um, with, with, with regards to the parks too, I think people should know too, I mean, there's differences. Uh, I mean, you can go to the parks, but like the fields I know, that are in the parks, those are permitted. So yes. it's not like you can just stroll in and have a pickup game of whatever. Well, you can. You can if there's nobody there's there. The, if there's no one there. But the difference is that if you have a permit, then you have, you know, you've, you're you permitted to be on that time. So if somebody's having a pickup game on a soccer field and someone shows up with a permit, then that permit person bumps 
the person who showed up. And anyone can get a permit. Right. So, you know, folks who maybe are getting bumped and are getting frustrated, all they have to do is call our office and they can get permitted to get scheduled time on fields and diamonds as well. And speaking from experience, usually you can get your time. Usually, um, so if you're well, if you're on if you're early enough, I don't want to say early enough, but if you're when the process starts, usually you can get whatever what you, yes. what time you're looking for. Yeah, the so later you wait, that's true. So what we do is we have a specific time frame for each season, and we collect all those permits, and then we lay them out, and we say how can we best accommodate everyone in their time slot, and you know sometimes we do have to call leagues and say hey can you know. We don't, we don't have this field at your time slot, but we could offer you this field, or we can offer you your, the field that's your preference at a different time slot. So we really try to make sure that everyone gets you know, access to the fields and diamonds that they need. And um, you know, one of the things that we have a deficit of in the city, and we've known this for a long time, is soccer fields. So yeah. we're really excited that we're gonna be adding a full-size soccer field at Dias Field, and that'll be the first full-size soccer field in the city. Can you believe it? They're not no, I we we oh. don't have a single full size soccer field currently. Because I know that it's funny because the one down here in the South End, uh, right across from Renwick, what, yeah, yes, yeah, it, that, that's Ave. always busy. Oh yeah, all our soccer fields are busy. They really are. Mm -hmm. It's a very popular sport in the city. Right. Yeah. So those things are, are hugely important. And again, I think to be, to know there are different seasons too you you it's not just you get it one for the whole year you've got to do it right. spring summer I don't think winter you do anything we do fall though right yeah we do have fall permits yeah that's that's true and that's partly to give I mean partly it's because that's the way the seasons work but also partly to give um, just more access to them so we it creates more time slots so that we can accommodate you know everyone that wants a permit one of the things too that that you notice at the parks themselves I mean you mentioned the swing sets and stuff they're a lot more elaborate now. There's they a lot are. more um, amenities for, for younger kids, for older kids. There's, there's a lot there now for them to, to use. Right. So, and that's... A and I should, before you... Yeah. Safer. Yes, than, absolutely. Than the ones safer. that we grew up with. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Those tall, tall metal slides. Yeah, you won't see those anymore. I love those. I did, too. <laughs> no helmets or anything. I know, know right? <laughs> Yeah, so we, you know, um, playground design has really changed, really even in the past 10 years. And so the, lots of things that folks have been thinking about in the industry are creating, you know, um, playgrounds that offer some level of risk because kids need to, you know, stretch their, you know, wings and say, hey, maybe I'm going to climb a little higher this time. Right. You know, so that's important. But obviously in a very safe way with right. the safety surfacing and all. And also, you know, um, trying to help kids to have more creative exploration on playgrounds and maybe even build storylines. Like maybe today you're at the playground and you're on a ship and the next day you come and, it, you know, you're playing house on the playground or playing tag on the playground. And um, so more open-ended structures, you know, in the past, the, you know, it was climb up the slide, go down the slide, climb up, the, you know, so right. more... Um, you know, just programmed, and that that the industry is trying to move away from that a little bit. And it's funny when you talk about that. I mean, it's there, there is a lot of planning, and you, you're talking to your counterparts all over. Exactly. About yeah. It's there's a science to it, really, when you think about it. Yeah, it really is, and there's professionals that that's what they do, and and um, you know, we are active members of the National Recreation and Park Association as well as the Massachusetts Recreation and Park Association, and both of those associations just are so, they're a wealth of knowledge. We, you know, we collaborate with um, other park departments and we discuss all of these, you know, planning and, uh, you know, building and programmatic stuff that we're all working with all the time. You touched on it briefly earlier, but the splash pads, mm -hmm. hugely popular in the oh city boy. here in the, um, in the summertime. Yes. Um, and I've forgotten how many there are now. Ooh, you know what? I don't know. Because you've added some, too. Oh, yeah. I bet we have at least a dozen. Okay. Yeah. But I don't have that count in my head. <laughs> no, but it's, no, but I mean... It's but there's, they're, they're throughout the city. I can tell you that from the far south end all the way to the far north end. Brooklawn so. is... Uh, Brooklawn's huge. Very popular. Harrington Park is very popular. There's the new splash pads at Beauregard Pina and Monty's Park. And I've seen kids using those already this summer. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they're a great amenity. How, how difficult it is to get those? 
to get those into a park. Yeah, so they're they're a fairly yeah. expensive addition. And it, oh, it's so challenging too. It, physically, yes, it is because you have to run the plumbing right. and the water, and and you want, of course, to keep the um, splash pads really clean and sanitary. So you know, so there is a lot that goes into it. But yeah. the, I mean, uh, you, it, they're not that old when you think about it. No, um, Brooklawn I think went in twenty twelve or twenty thirteen. So yeah. And that was the first one, as that, I recall. Yes, that's exactly but, uh, right. But the popularity of those in that short span of time has been unbelievable. Right, it's true. And really, again, um, intentionally, because you know the heat island effect in cities mm -hmm. is real, and um, not everybody can get down to the beaches to get cooled off. So having a splash pad in your neighborhood is, is a great alternative. Yeah, Riverside, I know, is another pack one. But it's interesting, yeah, too, because yep. the, the north end ones, yeah. um, and I mean, you think, well, New Bedford's on the water, but but if you know, if you're a Cogsall Street or north of Cogsall Street, it's harder for a kid to be able to get down to the beaches. Oh yeah, for sure, especially a kid. Yeah. So those those splash pads are, are needed, really. When they you think are. About it. Yeah, they really are. Do and you families plan, take advantage of them? Do you have to? Do you look and see? Okay, this Park X ha doesn't have it, or we need to expand it, or I mean, how do you go into planning for? Because you have expanded them, how we do you have. look at where to go? So we, it really, we we look at the coverage for neighborhoods. You know, we say, you know, we want to make sure that kids can have access to one. So what we did was we just laid out where the existing ones are and where there weren't any, and and just strategically thought about which neighborhoods needed splash pads. You've just started too, and we should take time to talk about it. The Play in the Park program, yes, um, the summer food program, yes, we did. which is hugely popular. I mean, the the interesting thing too, and it's it's sad, but for a lot of kids, those are the only meals they're going to get. Yes, um, during a day. It's true. Tell us about the the program. Yeah, so it there is a real um, need for food security during the summer, and we we've heard that from families already this year, how important the program is to them. So. Um, we are running the program. This program's been running in the city since the 1960s. Um, we, since COVID, we have had to cut back on the number of parks that we uh, serve Monday through Friday, just because the funding is just not available for staffing. So what we've done is we've introduced a rec and relaxation van that started last year. So we've got um, the Play in the Park program and free summer meal program Monday through Friday at Brooklawn, Harrington, Hazelwood, and Riverside Park. And then we, the Rec and Relaxation van goes to two additional parks every day, Monday through Friday, serving free meals to the youth and also providing activities. And then we also are running three dinner programs. Right. So we've got Monty's Park as a dinner site, um, Dr. Jabril Kazan Park on Hillman Street is a dinner site, and this year we added the community gardens at Riverside Park as a dinner site. So we've got dinners now in um, South, West, and North End. And obviously healthy meals for, for the kids yes. um, and the dinners the same way. Mm -hmm. um, I know you guys are working, you, you gotta make the, the meals healthy and good for them. Right. Um, but there's activities going on too. There it's are. not just the meals. That's right. You're trying to yeah. get kids active. Yeah, so just yesterday kids were making slime, they were doing tie-dye t-shirts. And as the st staff, the staff goes to the same park every day. So as the staff starts to see who the kids are that come regularly, they work with the kids. You know, some kids want to play board games. Some want to do GIMP. Some want to, you know, kick a soccer ball around. So the staff works with the kids in the neighborhood. But yeah, we have all sorts of activities that we offer the, them during the summer. Do you see the, the um, do you see the growth? In, and I, that's not probably the right word, but more kids participating, that they, they need that help? So actually, ironically, in the parks, we've seen the numbers decline since pre-COVID. Pre -COVID. And so we've reached out to a lot of our partners like the Housing Authority and other folks to find out, you know, where are these kids going? Because we know the need is real. So what, um, what we believe is happening, because we're not serving less lunches overall, is that the kids are getting into enrolled programs. Because we also provide lunches to Denison Memorial, Boys and Girls Club, breakfast and lunch at most of the sites, yeah. you know, the YW kids. So what um, what we're seeing is that a lot of the kids are getting enrolled into these programs and getting their free lunch and breakfast at the enrolled program sites. Having gone to them, it, it's not just a pick up your meal and go. And as you said, there's different activities, but there's a lot of things going on and those kids are crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, they are running around yeah. and enjoying themselves yeah. and 
it, it's two hours if I'm not mistaken. It's isn't three. It? It's three from hours. eleven to okay. two. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's a lot of time for the kids to get out there and just do stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and supervised. And most of the staff that we have working in the parks are working in their neighborhood. So it's it's really empowering for the staff because they, they know a lot of the kids in the neighborhood. So you know, they get to hand out free meals and do activities with kids that, you know, are their neighbors. And it's it's a really empowering activity for the, the staff. So how long does the, the, the program go through? I just started and it goes until mm -hmm. when? Um, August 25th, Friday, August So really August at the 25th. end of the summer and school yep. starts. Exactly. That, so you're, I guess, for people that don't know, the gap, you're filling in the gap of what the schools do. That's exactly right. That's our intention is to start the summer program as soon as we can once school's out and then to continue it right through to the end of the summer. And the, and the, the activities as well. Everything, everything. everything yep. keeps going on. Yep. And we do, um, the food is provided by New Bedford Public Schools and they've been our partner on that for many decades. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing that they partner with us on is they, they also provide uh, free breakfast and lunch at many sites. So, for instance, a child who lives like near Monty's Park or Gomes School, the New Bedford Public Schools offering free breakfast and lunch at Gomes School, and then we offer the free dinner at Monty. So there's three meals available yeah. to the community. It's 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 sad that the need is so great, but it it, it is, and the, the, you know you hear that all the time. I know the United Way comes in and says donations are down yeah. in the summertime, and they need just the need is up. Yeah. And as you're you're seeing, obviously with inflation and everything else, people are really yeah. strapped right now to, to get the food. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's a big help for families and that's what they tell us, that this is a really big help. Um, I wanted to touch base too with, uh, as we talk about the park, because um, a lot of trails in the parks. I know yes. we did the show up at Brooklawn. Yep. Um, so when you think about the, the parks themselves, there's other things too at the parks that people might not be aware about and you don't have to touch, just touch upon uh, some of those things. Yeah. So uh, we do have three nature trails in the city, and um, we have a nature trail up in the north end off of New Plainville Road, um, the Flora B. Purse Trail. And then we also have a nature trail behind Pulaski School at the Rossi Matthew Nature Trail. And then the newest nature trail is the one at Brooklawn Park. And all of those are just about a mile long and um, accessible to you know the public. And then the, the Brooklawn Park Nature Trail also has the benefit of being in Brooklawn Park with the Ricketson Nature Center. So we've been doing a lot of programs outdoors on the nature trails out of the Ricketson Nature Center. And those are free and open to the public. And we are hoping people take the opportunity to go out there and, and check out the Ricketson Nature Center and, and our trails. And when you think of a city, it's like, oh, there's no nature. And yeah, as you just said, there's the three trails that you can, and, and not that kids aren't interested, but it's more, I think, of an adult thing, too, that get out, walk. Yeah. Um, yep, exactly. And the great thing about the nature trails is that they're shaded, so it's a great place to go when the sun is high and, and you're trying to get a little bit of cool air and shade. Right. Talk. Of, uh, let's turn our attention now to the beaches, because I think this is what separates the city from so many other oh, yeah. communities of the same size, the gateway yep. cities. Yes. Um, East West Beach plus Fort Tabor, yeah. you're, it's very busy. It is. I know you sold a lot of passes the other day. We did. When it got hot. <laughs> I heard that firsthand. Um, as you said, the beaches are ready. Talk about where, we, in a sense, where we stand with the beaches right now. So we, we're so lucky because we do have three miles of beach in the city and they're fully staffed with lifeguards. We've been um, working. Did you get enough lifeguards? We do. We. Uh, I think it must have been about six or seven years ago now, we were struggling to get lifeguards. So what we did was we reached out to the swim coaches at New Bedford High School, Tim Curry and Mike Griss. And so since then, they've been offering lifeguard certification in the pool at New Bedford High. And we have not had any trouble recruiting lifeguards since that time. So we, we're actually in much better situation than just about any other community that I've spoken to. Well, because I know nationwide, it's a huge issue. Yes, They're it is. You know, towns or towns yep. and cities are closing pools, closing yep. beaches, or yeah. use at your own risk. Yes, exactly. So we, and we, that national lifeguard crisis started after we had experienced that um, deficit in lifeguards. So, but getting that, getting that, um, collaboration with the New Bedford High School swim team has just been a blessing. And in, in the beaches, I know, um, obviously, you do need passes to, do, to, to park. park. 
The beaches, you don't need a pass to access the Correct. beach, but you do to park. Correct. Yes. And, you know, for $15 for all summer, yeah. it's a steal. It is. And the one thing, too, I don't think that people realize, so the people who are watching out of town, if you're an out-of-towner, you can still get a beach pass, oh, too. Oh, sure. Yeah. And so the passes are $15 for residents, $5 for seniors, and um, free for folks with a veteran's license plate. But yeah, it's $30 for our neighboring communities and $60 for anyone else. And we have, we do sell non-resident passes quite often. And, um, you know, folks who are coming from communities that don't have beaches, you know, they're happy to pay the $60 to come down and access our beaches for the whole summer. And, it, and that gives you access to three beaches. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the amenities at the beaches too, I mean, uh, you know, uh, East Beach, I know, has the volleyball net. Yeah. Um, there's different things at the beaches, too, for, for people to use. Yeah, there are. And West Beach has that beautiful pavilion, so there's shade. West Beach also is um, accessible. We have the wheelchair yep. ramp. And, Which and we did that. I remember is, covering that a yes. few years ago. Yep. I mean, that's, uh, I don't know how popular it is, but I don't know too many beaches that actually have that right. accessibility. Yeah, exactly. And the, b the pavilion is accessible, you know, because of the uh, concrete ramps that access it. So that's another great way to get access to the water. So, and then on the East Beach side, there's um, the pier there just north of the beach, which is also accessible and is gonna be renovated. Hopefully we did get a design, so we're hoping to get that funded soon too. And the one thing too with, with the beaches too, I know that um, there's different things. Obviously you've gotta clean up after yourselves. I mean, there's some, some oh, rules yeah. and regs that have to be oh, followed yeah. at the beaches. Yep. Yeah, I mean, because we want folks to be safe and, and we want our lifeguards to be safe too, you know. So we, um, you know, we work with our waterfront safety, um, our waterfront uh, supervisor on the safety issues. And we, you know, we want to make sure that everyone's just enjoying themselves and that um, we have a great, um, you know, summer. And we have a terrific track record on safety at our beaches. I'm going to knock on wood because... You know, but uh, that I can attribute that to our great lifeguard staff because they're on top of it, and like they know. No, I know no grills. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. No charcoals. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, which are hugely important. That is. Yeah. Yeah. I personally have had <laughs> an experience where I somebody covered hot charcoals with just a little bit of sand, and I stepped on it. That was many years ago, but it's not. It's a serious thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, want to get to because we got about five minutes to go. So I just want to just talk one more time about the beaches because you know one of the great things that's happened the last two years is that we've had plovers nesting on East Beach. Right. Plovers have not nested on East Beach for probably over a hundred years and and now they're back and so what a way I, I mean that just tells you how uh, clean our beaches have gotten that the plovers are back and they've successfully fledged um, chicks now two years in a row. And they're it's still blocked off, isn't it? I don't, I don't believe so because I think that the fledglings are gone. So okay. As soon as I, they usually nest beginning sometime in May and then sometime late June, early July, they're fledged. Okay. And this year they fledged a little early, which was wonderful. And it, I mean, the beaches are going to be packed with, with, with the oh, weather the way, yeah. the way it is right now. So This weekend's supposed to be beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. You've got a lot going on at the parks, too, with different yes. programs. So why don't you touch base on them? Sure. Um, I know you were talking tennis at a couple of them. Oh, yeah. So we have t uh, tennis programs, two different tennis programs running all year, all summer at Buttonwood Park. And we also have, um, we've got, let me see, I should have, we've and got the, the tennis. And the tennis parks are the tennis parks. The, the tennis courts are fantastic at Buttonwood. Oh, thank They're you. They're always busy. Yes, they are. And so we do, um, those are going to get resurfaced again um, fairly soon, oh, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because we, you know, we know how popular they are, and so we we will be resurfacing the courts at Buttonwood and also at Brooklawn and, and Hazelwood. They're going get, to be getting new courts hopefully before the end of the summer. That's the plan, and um, but we do have two programs running at um, Buttonwood. One is beginner, and one is for kids who have already done the beginner and want to get a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. Um, we have the Kennedy Summer Day Program running down at Fort Tabor again, and that's our camp-like experience. We hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. It's your name. It's pretty loud, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we are, have, you know. Those kids are having fun. Oh, they do. They have a great time. And they have access to the beach. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a really terrific camp 
for kids 5 to 14, and that's always been a popular summer activity. And, um, you know, there's soccer, there's all kinds of this karate, there's so many things happening this summer. And, and folks can find out about all of the programming we have at our website, which is um, www.nbprb.com, or they can go to our Facebook page, New Bedford Parks, Recreation, and Beaches, and, and follow, you know, follow us and just get all the information on all the programming we have running. And, and there's a lot, too. There is a lot. It's more than ever. We, um, we've got Mike Neves is now our recreation manager, and he's just been going strong and bringing on more and more programming. So we're very excited about all the offerings. How, how, how does the city, in a sense, uh, do you feel? I mean, obviously, you, I know you're biased. And, I am. <laughs> but, I mean, when you compare New Bedford to other communities of the same size, when it comes to, I mean, obviously the beaches, I think, separate New Bedford from yes. pretty much everybody, but just the programs you're offering, the things you're doing. Yeah. Are other communities as, um, uh, do they do as much with the parks as New Bedford does? Uh, yeah, I think many communities do. Um, some communities have stellar programs that they've been running for many years, and, and we often will, you know, get information from them because they've been doing it for a long time. And, and every city has different models. So for instance, we have some really great, strong youth athletic leagues in the city. So you know, many communities, the Parks Department, they, they run those athletic leagues. But because we have such great partners in that who are already running the leagues, you know, we see our role more as an introductory. So we do pre-K soccer, we do pre-K tennis, we're, you know, we're giving kids the opportunity to see what sports are out there, to try them, and then it, you know if they say, "Hey, I'm really into baseball," well, then there's plenty of organized baseball leagues and soccer leagues in the city that kids can tap into. You know, so that's really how we see our role. So every city's a little bit different in what they offer. We're, um, I think, the largest um, summer food program in the state. Wow. Yeah. Um, organized by one entity. A lot of other larger communities like Boston, it's many smaller entities doing summer food. So and the one thing that you've always talked about since you've been on too is you want to get people active. Yes. Physically active. Because I know that, I mean, you hear the issue of obesity and people yeah. are not healthy. And I mean, one of your things that you've always talked about is you want to get people out and active, whether that and means moving. walking or yep. doing something. Yeah. That's true, and, and that more and more we're hearing about the health benefit, the mental health benefits also of being oh. outdoors and in parks. So, you know, getting folks outside and from very young children all the way up to our senior citizens, it's just, it's a, so many benefits to it, both physical and uh, mental health benefits to it. And, um, and then it also benefits the community because when you're out in a park, you're talking to your neighbors, you're, you're seeing, you know, the kids down the street. So it's, there's just so many benefits to having parks that are welcoming and having folks in them using them. And, and we do see, you know, I mean, Buttonwood Park, there's walkers there. Every time I drive by, it doesn't matter how early or how late yeah. in the day people are out there walking. So well, same with Hazelwood. Hazelwood, yeah. I mean, we could be here and people are running around at night or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I know, I mean, right? So Yeah, so in Fort Tabor, too. It's, and one of the things we were doing this year at Fort Tabor which has been working very well, is we're no longer locking the gates at Fort Tabor at 8 p.m. We're only gonna do that one night this summer and that's for the 4th of July. But every other night this summer, the gates at Fort Tabor will not be locked. And I know that that's gonna benefit a lot of folks who you know, maybe wanted to walk at Fort Tabor in the evening, but you know, couldn't get there early enough and the gates close at eight. So, they, so this is, I think, gonna be a big blessing to um, a lot of folks in the community to have that accessible into the evening. Well, we are out of time. Wow, already? There's a lot going on. <laughs> um, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks, Jim. And I again, if people it. have any questions, go to the website. Yes, absolutely. And we'll get put that up there yeah. as well. Great, thank thanks you. Thanks for seeing you. Nice to see you uh, too. Alrighty. That's going to do it for this edition of City Hall Insider. I'm Jim Marshall of the New Bedford Cable Network. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon.